Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we're going to go over template reference variables versus template input variables. Now, we remember, I hope, um, in the previous videos, we talked about the you know, um, let car of cars, so the ng4 let car of cars. And I said, this is a template input variable. Now, and that's the keyword is let. And I also mentioned that the let keyword means that this particular variable is located the value is seen only within the element itself and it's not seen outside so if i tried to do something like this it would not be seen all right so the next thing i mentioned was there's a template reference failure variable and i just and I said that i didn't understand well i understand a little bit better i don't think i have the full picture what a temple um template reference variable is with the keyword pound sign that's a key symbol. Um, you don't, you cannot use var here. You can't do something like that. It's the pound sign only. And what this refers to, it is this variable, this variable, my variable, refers to the entire element in which it exists. So in this case, it would be this input variable. Okay. So as opposed to, as opposed to the template input variable, the reference variable right here will exist outside of the element. So, and it will be seen anywhere throughout the entire template itself. So if I div let car of cars, if I put cars down here, it wouldn't be seen because it's outside the element, right? But this one is outside the element because it's the template reference variable. And so I could put it anywhere else and it should be seen throughout the template. All right, a couple of things we have to keep in mind. These carry a different namespace. So if I put here my variable, I, I did that, it would basically, that is perfectly okay. Within this particular div element, my variable would be let car of cars. It would be the part of the list of cars. Here, everywhere else, my variable would take on the characteristics of this particular element. All right, so let's run this and see what happens. Okay, so we see the element here, input element, and then it's going to go through a loop of just numbers, list of cars, and it's going to print car that many times. And then we're going to print my variable right there. Sorry, that's my recording. Um, it lists the cars, the input element, and right here, it's called input. Right here. Why? Because that is the value, that's the characteristic of this particular variable. It's the input element in which it resides, in which it exists. Okay? So with this, we can get more characteristics. So dot type. So what type of element is this? It's a text element. And what is the value? Value of something. Value of something. See, notice that even though an another div element is in the way, it will still take on the characteristics of this one right here. All right, because that's where the variable itself, um, what it represents is this input element. And remember, use um, use the try to get unique variable names, but um, use the pound sign it itself, and be careful of the namespace. Again, this is okay, but if you want to be able to reference this value within the div element somewhere here, you don't want it to have the same name. Okay, that's the only problem. So, in other words, if I did the value. What would this be? This would be right here, not right here. Okay, one, two, three, four. It would list the, the lists. Finally, um, this is interesting because if I put right here, I put var or I put the pound sign, this will still always be a template input variable. 
Why? I don't exactly know. But it will work, but as soon as you get outside the div, it will be deleted. And that's what I didn't understand. For some strange reason, this will always be a template input variable, and that's um, but but this is a template reference variable which you can use in the future if you want to again refer to this particular a particular element throughout the entire template itself. Thanks.